Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak again. Uh, I thought I'd do this video to show you a test that I'm going to do with the HANA phosphate test kit. Uh, this is a test kit that uh, you can buy at one of your marine depot places. But what I did is I removed the poly filter and I replaced it with one of these phosphate filtering pads. Now these filtering pads uh, do state on them that it will not eradicate phosphates 100%. It just as quickly lowers phosphate levels, reduces algae, less frequent water changes. And it just claims right on the package it's a phosphate reducer infused media pad. Um, which means this is a 18 by 10 pad and this particular item does not say it will eradicate the phosphates a hundred percent now my phosphate readings with the poly filter has been like uh, 0 0.9 point uh, 84 .8, 0.84 and I just did a water change on uh, 1421 and it was 0 0.71. Okay, so we can see using probably carbon or a pad like Dick Boys or something, you could probably reduce it even more with uh, to help a BCB basket. But uh, this phosphate reducer, let's see how well it works. Now it's been running uh, 24 hours. So we have a 24 hour time window there and we are going to see exactly if the phosphates have been reduced anymore or if this is really not that good. Now I've used pads like this before and I found out that they may reduce phosphates. Let's say if you have high phosphates but they're not going to really bring it down real, real low. So if you have high phosphates, let's say, I'm, I, I'm just giving you a ballpark figure here, like five parts per million, let's say, it may bring it down one, one or two points, and that's about it. I, I don't think you should expect too much more from any a, a pad like this, that it's going to really bring it down to zero, your phosphates. But we do know that BCB does work and it does help bring down phosphate levels even though you're feeding your fish and everything else that uh, you're adding phosphates back in with the water change and everything else. So the first thing I do with one of these kits is I open up the Regent pack because these kits have a timer on them, this Hannah. And if you go and take too long, it will shut off automatically. I think it's like a two minute timer. So what I do is I take the package and I open it up. So it's all ready to go. And I just, uh, I found out that if you are using one of this, don't take the package and shake it. Try to find out where the powder is that's inside there and just open it up because uh, the powder will kind of clump together and it'll be hard to try to get it out. The next thing you want to do is, is grab your meter. And these are very nice meters, but uh, don't overspend for one. I found them for $50, which I guess a lot of people would say it's expensive, but I've even found them for more than that. So search the internet for one of these and they work quite well. They're better than the drops and they're better than trying to um, look at scales, you know, with all the different colors. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to, to, especially when it comes to phosphates. The tube goes inside and that's a 10 milliliter mark on there. There's a white mark, means 10 milliliters. That's what you're going to fill it up to. So I usually get the aquarium water. I add it in this way without putting the tube in the tank or anything. I add the 10 milliliters in. 
And next step would be to calibrate the meter. Now, what this is doing is the turbidity of the water. It's going to calibrate that tube and the turbidity of the water, basically. And that's why you do the first test without even putting any chemicals in. Because now it's going to call that zero. So you wipe off the tube, make sure you get any fingerprints that you put on the tube so you don't want to throw off any of the calibration. Set it in there. And then all you do is press the button. It turns on. It will say C1. Now you press it again. And then it will calibrate itself by looking at the tube and look at the glass, the tube, and the turbidity of the water, and then calibrate it and say, okay, this is zero. And it says C2. Once it says C2, it's done calibrating. That's all it's done. The next step is to pull the tube out. See, this is why it's important, because now you only have a little bit of time here, about two minutes. Make sure you put the powder in here. As like you see, make sure you get all the powder out. That's why I said don't, don't take the package and uh, make it so the powder all sits at the bottom. Because if it cakes down there, it's very hard to get the powder out. Once the powder is out, well, as we see here, it's a little hard to get out. But once the powder is all out, that's it. Cap it up. And now they they require you to shake it. Now don't shake it like this. Give it a good shake. And shake it at least a minute or longer. Okay. And uh, this is something that's very important. So the powder completely 100% dissolves. Remember, you're on a timer here. And this thing will shut off after two minutes. So shake it up real good for a whole minute, at least a minute. They say in the directions, I don't know why they say this in the directions, but they say in the directions that you should actually shake it up for two minutes. But if you did that, the timer would shut off. So that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Um, the shaking, it was to help just dissolve the powder 100 percent and this is very critical to make sure you get the right reading there's another thing about this is once you do all this and you calibrate everything and you get everything all set up okay uh, after you get your reading they recommend that you take the vial and empty it immediately so it doesn't get stained from the chemical that's in there that turns it blue. So wipe it off again, any fingerprints, put it in there. It's been shook for over a minute. Now you press and hold it. Press, hold the button. And there, it starts at three. That's a timer. Now you have to wait three minutes for it to read the phosphate reading. Okay, and that is what it's doing. The good thing it has a timer. Now, since we have a little bit of time, I wanted to make mention that on some of my videos um, that I have a discus tank and people constantly writing about the discus tank and they're saying it's overcrowded, it's overcrowded. I bet you I've had 30 people tell me that. And I have a link below. It's, it's uh, called Keeping Healthy Disc and it's by... Jack uh, Whiteley, and uh, they've been around for years and years and years and years, okay, and he passed away at 90 years old. They recommend one disc per 10 gallons of water. Now, these are the professionals. I've never watched one of the videos where I could say they gave the wrong information to the hobbyists. These people are the only or the biggest importer of discus from South America. They are the biggest, and Autumn Angels. They are the biggest importer in the United States. They know what they're doing. 
they spend eight to ten thousand dollars on shipments to get them in here and for discus and stuff like that and they are the number one discus place right here in florida uh, i think they're tampa i i don't know if they're tampa or they're even maybe they're even more southern than tampa maybe they're miami or even further south uh, of me i think it's at least a four hour drive for me to get there but i can drive there but the thing of it is not getting off hand is for those people who say my 60 gallon tank is overloaded you're 100 percent wrong they recommend one disc per 10 gallons of water that's what they recommend that means if you have a 10 gallon tank you're able to keep at least one disc in it uh disc is in it the whole thing of it is is that People keep writing, they keep saying, oh, your tank's overcrowded. So, no, it's not overcrowded. The angels don't require 10 gallons of water for an angel, 5 gallons of water for an angel, 10 gallons of water for any disc. So that means a 60-gallon tank should hold six full-grown discs, according to uh, Jack Wartley's hatchery. And... I'm going to take that pretty well to the bank that that is the truth because I have not found anything on their videos that I have not agreed with 100%. So instead of writing and saying the tank is overcrowded, watch the video and find out how many discs you can have in a tank, how many angels. It's not overcrowded. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for well over 50 years. You know, it's it's... I don't want to hear any more of those comments. I'm sure I'm going to still get them, but watch it. And and it really is quite shocking because one disc for 10 gallons of water, it seems like quite a lot of discs, but that's what they highly recommend, and they said it works. So we're going to see about this phosphate reading, and as we see, it's all done. It's 0.23. That knocked it down quite a bit, 0.23. And... And I was reading after the water change 0.71, but I know that would probably go back up to at least 0.8, okay, because that's normal. Your phosphates may lower because you just did a water change, and then it goes back up again as you keep feeding it all. But this is 0.23 parts per million of phosphates, which with the BCB basket and using this phosphate reducer it's not a remover it's just a reducer uh i would say that uh it uh it works but i could see where people get disenchanted with these pads because they may have a phosphate problem they use one of these pads that are made for it and they won't reduce their phosphates maybe quite enough so using a BCB in the canister filter plus one of these pads, as you can see, brought it all the way down to 0.23. Now for salt water, you would even want that to 0.03. You'd even want that even more so. But for fresh water, that's real good if you're going to bring it down to that low. Now we're, I'm going to see how it reacts with the plants. I'm going to see how it reacts with the with uh, the algaes and everything else and bringing phosphates down this low should eradicate your algae problems because your higher order plants are going to use any phosphates that are in there now the, th the next thing you have to do see it shut off it shut off after two minutes but now you have to take it and basically hurry up and clean that vial out so it doesn't stain the glass so that's what i'm going to do As you can see by this photograph, I thought I'd add this in. This is a poly filter. This is what I had in there. And it says removes all forms of phosphates. Uh, it says removes all forms of phosphate. Where the other pad says reduces. Well, as we can see using the poly filter, it, uh, it did not remove 100% of the phosphates. The BCB basket brought them down. The poly filter 
did help, but as their claim here, and it says it right here, removes all forms of phosphate, it did not do that. It helped bring it down a little bit, but it did not remove them or eradicate them 100%. I just thought I would bring that in there because this is what I was using, and it did help reduce them more so than just the BCB basket, but it did not, as it claims here, remove 100% of the phosphate. In fact, the phosphate reducing pad actually brought down the phosphates more so than the polyfilters did, and at a fraction of the price. But I'm going to assume that the polyfilter it says harmful organics, toxic ammonia. Uh, I did a, a video on these polyfilters. I myself have not found them to be um, that great. I know there are people out there who, who say religiously that they're absolutely wonderful. They make a huge difference. Uh, I have not found that to be the case myself. And they've been around for probably 40 plus years these have. I found more, uh, I found that if you use separates and not the polyfilters, you can s get more bang for your buck. And these polyfilters, don't forget, uh, for this big pad, that's like 45, 50 bucks for that pad. So they're extremely expensive. And I myself did not find them to be, uh, well, as we see here, the claim is removes, no, it doesn't remove phosphates 100%. It reduces them and just like the other package I showed you says reduces but it doesn't say eliminate or removes phosphates altogether. I thought I would just bring that up so if uh, anybody says that the poly filter should have had removed all the phosphates it did not do that and this pad did in 24 hours knocked it down several points from eight all the way down to two point uh point two three and that was from let's say point eight to point eight four it knocked it down so the poly pad at about uh almost five times the price did not bring it down as low as the cheaper pad but we'll see how long it works and I'm not trying to uh, discredit anybody for using a polyfilter. I'm just saying there are uh, other alternatives out there that you can use and maybe save a little bit of money. But uh, I have not found them to be that great for the price they're charging. Anyhow, I just thought I would bring that up. I'm not trying to cause a big problem. I probably have a few comments about how great they are. I have not found them to be wonderful, great. They didn't change my TDS. My TDS ro rose when I did my test. So whatever they're doing, if you're thinking they're working, then that's good. Use them. I'm not telling you not to use them. Just remember, some of these products out there, they've been around a long time. A lot of it, uh, you may be over-exaggerating of what they're doing. For some people, they do. They over-exaggerate what a product is going to do for them and they go from there. If it works for you, all I can say is use it. If you think it's worth the money, the $50 for a little bitty a 12 by 12 pad, then for you it's money well spent. For others, uh, you may want to hold off on buying such products if they're not really going to do a lot for you for the bang for the buck, I guess is what I'm saying. You get more bang for the buck buying other products today than maybe these extremely expensive poly filters. Um, I just thought I'd bring that up for the rest of the, this video. And thank you very much for watching.